topic of this afternoon is immediate restorations and as we all know that it's quite often it's a big problem yeah that that you have to to set up something in a really short time as an immediate loading and yeah i think i want to show you a way what we found out that it's possible to to set up something really good fitting for those immediate restorations in a short time for this uh yeah that's a topic of this this afternoon we want to speak about first of all let me share my screen with you okay so here we go. Immediate restorations, as you can see it on the screen, workflow example from our side, and it's a combination of, of uh, Zirconzahn modifier, scan software, and everything, uh, yeah, in that way a little bit brought together. And I will try to explain you the, the workflow the way running through how we think that it might gonna be a good idea to handle that. In front of whoop, here, is, yeah, a little bit slow by loading. Before we start, a few words about my own person. My name is Jürgen Feierabend. I'm a dental technician working here in the education center in Brunico. I'm quite long inside of that business, more than 30 years, and now running more than 10 years also for Zirkonzahn. My main task here is giving lectures, giving courses in, in all digital parts of, of software. And I'm also a little bit involved in, in development of new software. some words about the company himself i don't want to spend so much time on this because most of you will know where we are and, and who we are so we are based in the north of italy in south tyrol that is our our headquarter and as you can see here most of the education center and uh, yeah parts of the companies are based here and but we are we have also a few destinations all over the world in canada america mexico spain and, and two of them now also in germany the newest one is the education center stonehenge in middle of germany it's uh, yeah depending from the existing situation we are waiting for that to to open it official the start should have been in November, but yeah, also we have to wait until yeah we come back in a normal situation that we can run there the first courses. The company himself, quite young in my opinion, so it started 2003 with the invention of, of the Zirkograph from our CEO, Mr. Enrico Steger. The official start of, of Zirkonzahn was 2005 with 10 employees. And till today, it's not absolute up to date, but uh, now we have 2021 and we are now around 340, 350 people. The exact, uh, exactly number, I don't know. But during that time happened a lot, as you can see it here. It was a yeah, curve in that way. What's coming up about software, hardware, material, and also what you can see here on the screens. In the meantime, 11 milling units, scanners, a lot of millable materials and additional things. Yeah, which, uh, which can be... Uh, integrated in the digital workflow and we have a lot of partners all around the world and in the meantime we are also in over 80 countries where we export our things and materials so that was just 
small insight. Uh, as I told you, most of you will know us, and, but this was a small introduction maybe for some people outside who are not so fine with the company or who even don't know where we are or who we are. But now I want to come here to the main topic, immediate restorations. And it's a workflow example, What, as I told you, what we figured out from our side and what might be a, also an idea for you yeah, to, to, to run with that. The example is based on an upper all-on-4 case. And as every case, we start from the archive software where we, yeah, the archive software in that way, what we, what we use as a main point to, to collect all data and to store all data in one place, what we get, so that we have a complete base, uh, one folder where we know that everything is in that way inside. And for such a case, as I told you, it's an all on four case, the planning is done. We start here in the archive with a definition that we just define here 12 or 14 T's as anatomic pontics, nothing else. Because the first step uh, running that workflow is that we make a setup for the new situation and this situation has also, uh, as I will show you during the workflow, multiple tasks what we are doing with that and what we can use it for. So like here, all necessary things, what, what you have to sign in, dentist, patient and technician, and also description on the right side in the archive, uh, what we want to do. That means anatomic pontics for all T's, what we want to set up for this digital wax up for the reference later on also for our immediate loading. From here, we send everything to the scan software and we can handle that with intraoral scans or like here on that example, the old way or old school with, with plaster models, what we have, what we can see here on the screen. Uh, we have the old situation. That means the yellow, we have an antagonist, the lower, the yellow one are the healthy, the old existing uh, situation. And in, in that example here, it was planned to remove all the teeth and to, to set up everything for, for a full arch with four implants. Also, what you can see here, we got directly for this patient, we got a new vertical situation. All the teeth or the old situation, it was grinded down. He lost quite a lot of his vertical dimension and it was necessary to recover his new or the old vertical dimension as best as possible. That's why here, directly in that way, uh, the teeth are not in contact. So that what we got from, from the surgeon in that way, he made a chick, a new, or he made a bite, not a chick, whatever, comes to the same result to see uh, that we can work on the new situation, the new vertical. The model where we are working on is here, we digitally removed the existing teeth and we prepared the upper model in that way for the setup and for the planning of the new situation. And finally here we have old and new once again from the side. We made the digital articulation with that inside here and that is our starting point for the upcoming steps what we have to do. And the next step is that after the scan process, digital articulation, so finally the digital plaster room, we send everything here to the Zirconzahn modifier software for, from, from Zirconzahn to create a digital wax up out of that. Now here, from the definition what we made in the archive, we get here the T's for that case, 
and we can even decide it here, let it run with 12 T's or let it run with 14 T's. But finally, the first step is here regarding the new situation. We make a setup to that, choose the right T's out of the library where we think that they are good working with that and yeah, bring them as best as possible in our ideal situation from regarding the point as a technician where we say that could be our final work as immediate loading but also later on as a final restoration where we say that would be our idea to run that case as best as possible. Also inside of the modifier it's you can at any point you can uh, make the decision just run with the T's or you can also decide, like we can see it here on the screen, uh, that you want to prepare or set up a case with Jinjiwa. In that picture here, digital articulation is also possible inside of the modifier software. It's a little bit different to that what you know from, from the model year software. So you have multiple windows here. It's an easier way of, of making digital articulation to that what you can see in scan software or model year software. And now when the setup from the T's is, is finalized and we decide also here for that case that we want to create Jinjiwa to that. Uh, it's in that way necessary step to make a block out from our master model to, to divide uh, not to divide, to, to stay away from possible undercuts, to block out the model that we don't run in trouble afterwards when we want to adapt the structure to the model that we have undercuts and yeah, that it doesn't fit so nice as we want to have it. Blockout is done with possible parameters on the left side. You can compare it a little bit with byte splint module or that. So. It's a thing what needs to be done and afterwards you define a line where you want to have the margin from the Jinjiwa or the line for the Jinjiwa. The software creates you the Jinjiwa inside of that defined area and, and it's also on you to make a modulation as best as possible how you want to have it. A different view, frontal view setup with a Jinjiwa and finally another look from the side to see what is our idea for this case as from the view uh, as a technician. The last view from that side, so occlusion is done and Finally, we can go forward to build out of that. When everything is fine, we can describe in the software, okay, out of that, we want to build up a digital wax up. And this wax up, as I described to you in the beginning, has multiple functions. One thing when the wax up here, it is finished, everything, T's and Jinjiwa is merged together from the software. We are able to implement this wax up also inside of the implant planner. So that means that is a situation from the, our patient what we have. We can import, in the first step, we import his old situation before the T's are removed and we can match this model to our DICOM data and in the next step we are also able to import our setup, our wax up, what we created inside of the modifier and the wax up is in that way, how can I describe that, that is our visual help how is it possible to, to, yeah, to bring the setup and the planning of the implants as best as possible together? 
So finally, if we can arrange that, that our planning from the new restoration and the placement of the implants can be combined as best as possible. I would say it's a win-win situation at the end for technician and also for the surgeon that you can save also in that time during the whole workflow. Placement of the implants, I think here it's in that way no need to speak about in a more detailed way about that. And now here we can see it's an all-on-4 case. Four implants are chosen from the software, placement in that way, done. And yeah, the placement is inside of the structure. There are no screw channels which bring us anywhere in trouble later on to create the structure on top, that there are no screw channels coming out to the vestibular side, that we are still in, in, in inside of, of a good position, which is easy to handle for the technician later on. Like here, when we can see it from the occlusal view, so the implants are complete inside the structure. So I would say if we got such a case, as to design something, uh, it might gonna be easy to handle for the following steps. So that is one thing regarding this way to the immediate loading. And the same structure, the same wax up, what we choose, we made the setup, we used it in the implant planner, and we take the same structure afterwards and send it to our nesting software where we're going to start the first part of double milling. For that, give me a second, I will show you the video. And I have to stop sharing and I share the video with you. First time, in combination with special holders, material blanks with a diameter of 95, 98, 106, or even 125 millimeters can be elaborated. This means that oversized bridges, which would not fit in normal blanks, can be positioned and milled without any problems. Also, bite splints production doubles, and in one single milling process, a much larger number of crowns can be manufactured than before. We have also developed special holders for glass ceramic and raw abutment blanks, as well as for small zirconia blanks. Okay, so that was a small video about our new milling machine, the M2, because Background is also double milling. It might be a little bit easier with the M2 with a removable orbit or changeable orbit, but it works also in that way with the other existing machines. So now we're gonna continue with the lecture from my side. Um, as you can see now, as I told you, first step of double milling is that we send the structure to the nesting software and it is necessary that we register a blank with a QR code to have the option of double milling and when the blank is in that way you register the blank inside of the software afterwards second step is you go on expert and you activate the option of double milling. That is in that way necessary to follow that workflow. Otherwise, you will 
can run in trouble with that. So first of all, register the blank. Second step, activate the double milling. And then you take out the structure of the uh, nesting queue and load it inside of the blank. And here the nesting need to be done in a normal way like you usually do it. You place it inside of the blank. You place also your connectors to the structure and there is no difference to that what you usually do when you run a normal workflow without double milling. So here, in that way, everything like usual. Then we save it in that position. I, read, I named it here as part one. And we also start the come calculation that we choose which quality and which necessary milling bars we want to take out of that. So here high quality and we also include the 3R for a faster milling inside to the workflow and we let the calculation run. So now we can see it also here when we take a look at the CNC passes or when we are, we are able, I think you all should know that, that you are able to, to check the CNC passes. We can see directly here that only one side is calculated, but that's everything is normal because double milling, that means we are going to do something in two steps. And the first step here of double milling is that we calculate and mill just one side. And here on that picture, you can see it's the upper part, the anatomy part is going to be milled up to that point, what you can see here on the screen. Uh, the border of milling is that the software takes the placement of the connectors as a reference, how deep it should gonna be milled from, from the occlusal view down. So, and if this is ready milled, I would say it's uh, 60, 70% of the structure is done. So more than half of it, finally it's, it's ready milled. Here it's a screen from, from nesting software and that what it looks like, that is an example when, yeah, the first step is done. So the anatomic part up to the connectors, finally it's ready milled. Most of the things is in that way done. Now we wait for the surgery. Everything what we made up to here is possible to do it in front of surgery. A day before or a few days before with the M2, you have the option you can remove the whole orbit, put the orbit to the side, rest the blank inside and wait for the second step. If you have an M1 or, a, yeah, M1 or an M4 in that way, uh, then it is yeah, not so easy, but it's also possible if you do it evening before, might be better to rest the blank inside of the machine and wait for the second step for the additional information what we got from the surgeon when he finishes uh, his surgery. So, and when surgery is done, uh, the software, uh, the doctor in that way use the scan marker, he screws the scan marker inside, takes an impression or he makes an infrared scan of the position after surgery and he sends it back to the lab. And now we take or we start here uh, the model here software and we load the infrared scan, the new information of placement after surgery. We implement it, we load it inside of the software to use it as a scan marker scan for the next step, for the second step to adapt our digital wax up to that situation here. First of all, when the scan arrives, he's for sure not in the right position. So that means in between, after loading the scan, it is necessary make a matching from 
to scan marker from the new situation and we match it to our existing model where we started with setup for, for the immediate loading. It's for sure not 100% that the fitting is really 100% of both to each other, but we speak about an immediate loading. That means also this immediate loading, it's a, it's a case for the patient that he is able to go out after surgery. He has teeth inside his mouth. He doesn't need to go out as an dentalist patient. But uh, as you all know, the, the gingivar is in that way yeah, swollen and, and need to be healed up. But finally, if you choose the right material, it can also re rebased after a few days of healing from the patient. But first of all, we come to that, or the, 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 the main important thing is the patient get something after his surgery, or you can offer the patient directly something after his surgery. And running the workflow here, you see it's not 100%, but that is normal. There are, there are for sure small difference between our model where we are working on and the model or the information what we get after surgery and the workflow after the matching of those both models to each other. It's, yeah, I would say it's a standard workflow, what you all should know. You choose the right implant out of the library and you also choose if you want to have it with tie bases or without tie bases. Afterwards, you adapt the existing wax up to the model and you finalize it yeah, by free modulation here, you can check the occlusion once again and you can finalize it in that way as you yeah, think you are fine with that. Adapt such a structure uh, inside of the model year software. I think regarding the time, everyone who is working with our system knows that it's, yeah, running quite fast or that's a possibility to adapt such a structure. It's not a big thing when everything is existing to choose the right implants and to adapt it to, to the model, check the, the situation regarding uh, how is the fitting from the structure to the Jinjiwa and give him maybe some small final corrections out of that, but that can be done, I would say that's, that's more or less done in, in, in 15 minutes. And afterwards, when you run that through, we send it a second time to the nesting. And here we come, double milling part two now. That means we take the same blank or we, we load the same blank what we already had from the first step. Our structure, as we can see it here, is still inside and it is nothing else to do for the second step as to load just the second structure inside to the blank. The software in that way is able to recover the first position from that what we made in double milling part one to recover that situ uh, position alone. And it's also no need to, to spend time or to, to place connectors again. It's just the only thing what you have to do, load the structure, check it that the position is in that way, the same as in double milling part one, like here. Even when we make some small corrections, there are so many reference on the whole structure that we can be sure that the position in that way is correct. And nesting is, yeah, it's quite an easy step. As I told you, you open the nesting software, you load the blank, load the structure, and afterwards just go and save it as part two or your own name, I named it here as part two. 
I also choose the quality, again, high quality, and also for a faster milling, the 3R, to get a faster milling result afterwards. And calculation is done, so the CNC calculation is done. And now we can see here for, for the part two, the second part, the, the base is in that way calculated and also the position of the implants and the screw holes might be easier to see on that picture. So now in the second step, we mill just the lower part, the base part, connection to the model. And if we choose uh, tie bases, like in that case here, the software calculates the holes for the tie bases and also the screw channel. And that is all what you need to mill in the second part. And the time calculated for that is around an hour. That is depending, so milling time is in that way calculated for an hour and that is also round about the time what you can yeah, think about what is necessary what you have to invest as time so milling time is an hour and maybe 20, mil, uh, 20 minutes as I told you to, to import the scans make the matching adaptation to the model and in, in an hour 20 an hour 30 everything is, is finalized and so the second step means our background also of double milling with the second step is that you are able to to create a good fitting and a nice looking structure in around one and a half hour complete workflow you have to take it out you have to polish a little bit and finally in around two hours i would say it is possible to deliver a good fitting and a nice aesthetic result for the patient after surgery that is here the example from the lower side upper side was in that way only from that side the four holes for the screw channels need to be milled and from the lower side adaptation to the gingiva and also <coughs> the holes for the so tie bases need to be milled. That is finally everything what is necessary to run this workflow for an immediate loading. That is our idea behind that. And I would say running that workflow, you can be sure that you are able to offer a good fitting and a nice looking result after the surgery i think we all know how often we run in trouble when we got the phone call after surgery i need a provisional and do something and uh, yeah in that way the whole lab uh, is in that way tries to bring something out and that is with with dentures and you drill holes inside or when you make something manual so i'm can remember to that time in the lab that it was quite often everyone was in a hurry to, to build something good or nice and good fitting and then afterwards you are also not 100% sure when you, when you gave it in the end of the dentist, was it really okay, was it fine. Here with that workflow I would say if you prepare everything in front, you have in front of surgery, you can use, as I showed you, the wax up or the setup also for the planning of the teeth inside of the, of the uh, planning, implant planning software. And you can also run the first part of double milling that you can mill the structure or you can finalize the structure up to 60, 70% in front of surgery. And then you have just to wait for the example or the, for the result of the scan marker, match it to the existing situation, adapt the model, send it again a second time to the nesting, let it run through, mill it, and 
as I told you, in around two hours, I would say that is the example for a full arch, but you can handle that even with smaller cases. It's possible from a single crown up to a full arch to run that workflow. So even with a three, four or five unit bridge, and then the time gonna reduce also down, I would say, a, three unit bridge that is just 15 20 minutes of milling time for the second part but you can be sure that you that you can that you are able as technician yeah it's a safe thing to deliver something where you know okay it fits on that position and uh, occlusion and, and fitting from the structure inside of the mouse will be run without having any problems or any issues so finally that was from my side the lecture about that